Hello good people! We have another exciting tutorial for you guys today, as always. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to sync your iTunes library across multiple computers. Now, the reason why you want to do this, and I have encountered this problem several times, is that I own both an iMac and a Mac MacBook, as you guys may know, and they have different iTunes libraries. So, if I sync my iPod Touch to my iMac, and then I go to my MacBook, and let's say I purchase a song on my MacBook, now I have to go through a whole big process to make sure that I have the songs from my iMac library and have that one song that I just purchased on my MacBook. But by using Dropbox to host my iTunes library, I can sync my libraries universally across the cloud. So no matter where I am, I have the same library. So if I purchase a song on my MacBook, it will end up on my iMac iTunes library. So this is actually a really useful tutorial, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. Unless your iTunes library is small enough, you're probably going to have to start paying to do this. Uh, Dropbox is nice enough to give 2 gigabytes free. You can earn up to an extra 16 gigabytes if you refer people, and uh, possibly even more by completing other tasks. Um, but if your iTunes library is still too big, you're going to need to purchase one of their pro options. Uh, you can purchase the Pro 50, which is 50 gigabytes for uh, $10 a month, or you can get 100 gigabytes for $20 a month. Um, they do give you a discount if you prepay for the entire year. Um, I love Dropbox, so I feel it's worth paying, but ultimately it's a decision that you guys are going to have to make on your own. Although syncing is the easiest part of this tutorial, waiting is the hardest part, because it does take a while for Dropbox to sync all of your music and videos, etc. Um, but the first thing you have to do is locate your iTunes music library, and chances are it's going to be under Music, and there will be a folder that says iTunes, and if you go into that folder, you'll see one that says iTunes Music. Um, I'm going to sync the entire folder, but you can sync whichever part you want. So you're just going to want to take that and drag it into your Dropbox folder. Now, as I said earlier, this will take a while as it needs to sync several gigabytes of, um, of files. If you've been following along with this tutorial and you just sunk or synced your iTunes library, then congratulations because this has probably been the longest upload that you've ever experienced. And now it's time to move on to step three, which is going to be telling iTunes where your new library is. So to do that, you want to go to iTunes, and then you want to go to Preferences. You want to click on the Advanced tab, and then where it says iTunes Media Folder Location, you just want to click Change, and you're going to want to go to your Dropbox folder, and into your iTunes folder, not the one... You don't want to select the iTunes folder, you want to select the folder that says iTunes Music. Unfortunately, this solution to your um, multiple iTunes libraries uh, does come with some problems, and in addition to the wait time, uh, one of those is that you're only allowed to have one iTunes application open. So if you have several different computers, only one of those iTunes applications on that computer can be open at a time. Uh, but fortunately enough, there is a way around this, and I'm going to show you what to do. First thing you need to do is go into System Preferences, and under Sharing, you want to check the box that says Remote Apple Events, and you want to do this for all of your computers. So now we're going to need to use an Apple script to tell the iTunes applications on my other machines uh, to exit. And to do this, you need to use this Apple code right here, and where it says Your IP, that is where you're going to put the IP address of your other machines, not the one you're on, but the other ones. Um, and you will need to repeat this process for your other machines too, so you need to do this vice versa. So if you have an iMac and you're on your iMac currently, you need to put the IP address of, let's say, your MacBook, and if you're on your MacBook, you need to put the IP address of your iMac. Once you have done that, you want to go to File, Save As, and the file format you want this in is an application. So the final step of this process is automatically having that Apple script run when we open iTunes on my iMac. So when I open iTunes on my iMac, I would like the iTunes on my MacBook to close if it's open. And the best way to do this is with the preference pane called DSW, also known as Do Something When. So you're going to open that up. And under Rule Name, we are going to change this to Quit iTunes. Where we see mounts, we want to change that to launches. And under one, we want to select our application. And the application we're going to be selecting is iTunes. And we want to leave, under what, we want to leave open 
to open and we want to select application or document and we want to select the Apple script that we created. So to just recap what we just did, now when iTunes on my iMac opens, it will run the Apple script quit iTunes, which we told to quit the iTunes on other machines. Uh, you also want to make sure that at the top where it says do something is currently on, um, if it's not, you want to turn it on, and if it is, then you are all set. So once you completed all these steps, guys, now you're going to need to do these steps again on your other computers where you want to have your iTunes library accessible. Um, and then once you've done that, you have completed this tutorial, and now you uh, have synced your iTunes library across multiple computers, and now you can sync your iDevice to any single one of those computers at any point in time, and you don't have to worry about you know, some libraries having different songs and then making sure that you get to keep those songs if you sync it to another computer. It's all just a whole lot easier. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, make sure to follow me on Twitter for exclusive content, twitter.com slash Fisher12. Um, I will see you guys next weekend and stay frosty.